Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at an application of inductive reasoning called number patterns. You may recall from the definition of inductive reasoning video uh, that number patterns are one type of inductive reasoning. So we make assumptions based on the information we're given and no additional information. Okay, so we're going to talk about number sequences. A number sequence is a list of numbers having a first number, a second number, and so on and so forth. Usually these numbers are called the terms, so instead of number we might say a first term, a second term, blah blah blah. Oh, there it is. These numbers are called the terms of the sequence. There it is. And the other thing about number sequences is they have no end. So they have a beginning, but they have no end. So one example of a number sequence would be 5, 8, 1, 0, 4, 17, 23, so on and so forth. There is a first term, a second term, a third term, blah, blah, blah. We get the idea. Now, this number sequence isn't great because usually what we want to do is we want to try to figure out, well, what, what's a pattern? What's the next number in the sequence? Or what's the 50th number in the sequence? And so we might look at this pattern and say, well, let's see, we added 3, we subtracted 7, we subtracted 1, we added 4. Yeah, this one's going to be a little bit tough to come up with the next number. You can probably put whatever you want and justify it however you want since there's no pattern that we see. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to see whether the following list is a sequence or not. If it is a sequence, we're going to identify the first term. Here we have 7, 21, 63, 189, the dot, 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 that indicates that this there, the numbers will continue. Uh, there is a first term, there is no last term, so yes, this is a sequence. Yes. It says identify the first term, the first term is 7. Next we have dot dot dot, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, dot dot dot. Okay, is this list a sequence? So for it to be a sequence, it has a defined first term and no last term. This indicates that this pattern is repeating before we ever get to negative 3. So no, this list is not a sequence. Example 3, 4, 4, 4, 4, dot, dot, dot. It starts here at 4. It goes on. So yes, this is a sequence, a very boring sequence. And the first term is 4. And our next example, we have 1, 2, 4, 8. So I see we have a first term right here. That's good. However, this list stops at 8. We know it stops because there's no dot, dot, dot. There's no comma behind the 8. So this is not a sequence. No. Okay, here we have 0, a half, 2 thirds, 3 fourths, dot, dot, dot. Here we see our first term. Here we see that this pattern or the, the numbers will continue. I don't want to say pattern. Maybe you see a pattern. Maybe you don't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't ask us to find that at all. Um, first term, no last term. So yes, this is a sequence. And the first term of this sequence is zero. In case you want to see the solutions all worked out with my explanation, you can pause the video here and check them all out. Okay, so frequently in mathematics, we, use, we look at two very common types of sequences. The first one is called arithmetic. It looks like the word arithmetic. In fact, they're spelled exactly the same, but it's pronounced a little bit different, arithmetic. So there's arithmetic sequences, and geometric sequences. Arithmetic sequences, uh, after the first term, each term is found by adding the same amount to the preceding term. And I want to caution you here, I want you to remember that subtracting is a form of addition, right, because it's, it's equivalent to adding the negative. So even if something is, looks like it's going and decreasing, it looks like you have to subtract a certain amount, that technically counts as an arithmetic sequence, because if it's, say, minus 6 each time, you could say plus negative 6. That same amount is called the common difference, the common difference. So in the example 30, 34, 38, 42, we can make the assumption that this is an arithmetic sequence because we see it's going up by 4 to get from 30 to 34, I would add 4. To get from 34 to 38, I would add 4. From 38 to 42, I would add 4. So we can make the assumption that to get from 42 to the next number in the sequence, I would add 4. And therefore, we might say that it's 46. The common difference, so what was the same thing we added over and over again? 4. So we would say it's positive 4. In a geometric sequence, 
each term after the first term is found by multiplying the same amount to the preceding term. And again, division is a form of multiplication. Division is the same thing, is equivalent to multiplying by the reciprocal. So instead of saying divide by four, we would say multiply by one fourth. That same amount that we multiply each time is called the common ratio. So in the example, one half, three, 18, 108, 648, to get from one half to three, I could multiply by six. To get from three to 18, multiply by six. To get from 18 to 108, multiply by six. To get from 108 to 648, I could multiply by six. So I could presumably find the next term in the sequence by taking 648 and multiplying it by six. This six is the common ratio. That is our common ratio. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna identify whether a given sequence is arithmetic, geometric, or neither. If it's either arithmetic or geometric, we're gonna give the next term in the sequence and the common difference if it's arithmetic or the common ratio if it's geometric. So here we have two tenths, one and, and five tenths, two and eight tenths, four and one tenth. Um, let's see, to get from two tenths to 1.5 tenths, it's gonna be some weird multiplication. Let's try adding. That would be plus 1.3. To get from 1.5 to 2.8, I would have to add 1.3. To get from 2.8 to 4.1, I would have to add 1.3. So this appears to be an arithmetic sequence. And then what was I supposed to do? Give the next term. So the next term is going to be 4.1 plus 1.3, which is 5.4. And the common difference. So this is arithmetic. We have a common difference. That common difference, so what's the same thing I kept adding? The common difference is 1.3. I use just the letter D. Um, common difference, we use the letter just D. For common ratio, we would use the letter R. Okay, in example seven, we have two, five, four, seven, six, dot, dot, dot. To get from two to five, I would have to add three. To get from five to four, I would have to add negative one. Four to seven, add three. Seven to six, add negative one. While there is a pattern, I could predict that the next term in the sequence I would need to add six plus three, it is not arithmetic, nor is it geometric. And you might say, but look, we're adding, but it's not the same value every single time. So this one is neither arithmetic nor geometric, and I don't have to do anything further with question seven. Question eight, I have 400, 200, 150. Checking to see if it's arithmetic. First, I would subtract 200, subtract 100, subtract 50. That's no good, that's different amounts. But instead, to get from 400 to 200, I would divide by two. To get from 200 to 100, I would divide by two. And I could divide by two. But remember, okay, so this indicates to me that it is a special sequence, this is geometric. But the common ratio, remember, we must use multiplication. The common ratio, instead of saying divide by two, the equivalent is to multiply by one half. So we would say the common ratio is a half. Then we wanna figure out the next term of the sequence, so it's gonna be 50 times 1 half, or if you want to, you can say 50 divided by two, that's fine. Either way, you're gonna end up with 25. Here are the answers if you wanna see them again. Otherwise, thanks for stopping by.